Today, we have the privilege of uh, speaking with Dr. Anthony Dorian. Uh, he is a neuropsychologist. Um, how are you doing, Dr. Dorian? Doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. So um, let, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Uh, Tony Dorian. Uh, I'm a neuropsychologist. Um, grew up on the, the East Coast, uh, mainly New York, New Jersey, and Long Island. Uh, got my bachelor's at uh, Rutgers University. Went on, got my master's at the New School of Social Research. Uh, got my doctorate in clinical psychology at the University of Hartford. Joined the Navy after that. Um, after a couple of years, the Navy uh, liked my work, and they said, hey, we'll have you do a fellowship wherever you want, and uh, went to Harvard Medical I uh, did my fellowship in uh, neuropsychology there, and then I spent the, the next 15 years uh, in the Navy, uh, got out in 2011. While I was in the Navy, lots of experience with the wars going on, treating PTSD, traumatic brain injury. Everybody in the military got a lot more training uh, in those conditions during that time. When I got out in 2011, I was very fortunate, um, hooked up with a, a community concussion clinic. Uh, we became one of the busiest concussion clinics in the in the country. We saw anywhere from 16,000 to 20,000 uh, concussions uh, per year, um, which is where I got a bulk of my experience. Uh, I've been doing this uh, 30 plus years. I've seen about 30,000 concussions over the course of my career and uh, love doing what I'm doing. I'd like to thank you for your service, Dr. Dorian. And... Thanks for coming on uh, the show with us today. Uh, first, I wanted to ask you, what is a concussion? Uh, concussion, I use concussion and mild traumatic brain injury kind of interchangeably. Um, a concussion occurs whenever there's a blow to the body or to the head where the brain shakes violently uh, in the skull. Uh, imagine... The brain's a sponge filled with fluid. Um, what happens when I throw that sponge against the wall? The fluid in the sponge is going to get squished together. It's going to leak out. And the fluid outside the sponge is going to leak in. And that's one of the injuries that occur uh, with a concussion. Uh, the other type of injury is in high-velocity injuries like motor vehicle accidents. The, the brain's going to rotate. The neurons in the brain are going to get pulled, stretched, and torn, causing shearing. And that's the secondary type of injury. It's going to cause a host of symptoms, cognitive, physical, emotional, and sleep-related symptoms that can last weeks, months, and in some cases, years. Wow. And how do you diagnose a concussion? And I've been doing this... Uh, you know, plus 30 years, I've seen over 30,000 uh, concussions over, individually over the course of my career, um, helped establish and work in a concussion clinic where we saw 16 to 20,000 concussions a year. And we use specialized techniques to identify a concussion. One is, imagine three legs of a stool. One leg of the stool is history. The other leg of the stool is physical exams or observation, and the other leg of the stool is neurocognitive testing. So the first is we're going to do a specialized history, getting the mechanism of injury, risk factors that the person might have um, to, to find out what symptoms, was there a mechanism of injury to cause a concussion, and what symptoms a patient is experiencing. Most doctors stop there. We don't stop there. We do a cranial nerve exam. We do a balance exam. We do an ocular motor exam. We do a vestibular exam. And those are our observations or physical exam. And then the last leg of the stool is neurocognitive testing, looking at a patient's verbal memory, visual memory, reaction time. Wow. So um, one, I would, I'd ask you this. A lot of patients I've seen uh, that have had concussions, they went to the emergency room or they went to their primary care doctor there. Uh, x-rays or MRIs of the brain uh, seem to be normal, no findings. I want people to understand that even if they have a negative MRI, they could still have a concussion, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 90, 
eight ninety nine, depending on what studies you're looking at. Most studies are going to say, hey, between ninety five to ninety nine percent of MRIs and CT scans are are going to be negative, and that's because the the imaging technology that we use today can't get down to the cellular level to see that, hey, all those chemicals in the brain are all mixed up. Um, what the emergency room is doing and what the primary care docs are doing is they want to find out, hey, is there anything life-threatening? Mm -hmm. Is there a skull fracture? Is there a brain bleed? And that's what a CT scan or MRI is, is going to pick up on. Okay. It's not going to pick up on um, a, a concussion. Okay. Um, why would somebody uh, see a neuropsychologist um, well, a neuropsychologist specializes in brain behavior relationships. Um, neuropsychologists are going to specialize in typically different brain disorders like epilepsy, uh, MS. Um, for me, um, it's, it's brain injuries. Other docs might be brain tumors. So the neuropsychologist is going to work in conjunction with neurologists, chiropractors, physical therapists when one of those referral sources suspect, hey, there might be uh, some difficulties. This patient might have suffered from a concussion. And then a neuropsychologist can do that exam that I, that I uh, introduced a little while ago to identify, hey, yeah, this, this patient has a specific. And, and what I do is I'll de identify what type of concussion a patient has. Do they have a migraine concussion, an emotional mm. concussion, a cognitive memory fatigue concussion? Right. Great. So yeah, like what you had said before, emergency room doctors, primary care physicians are more trained in to see if is, is this an injury that's life threatening versus knowing the nuances of of concussion, of what type of concussion is or how severe it is and, and so yeah. forth. Great. Yeah. And it and it doesn't matter like I, I've had this experience kind of throughout the country, like incredible universities, Johns Hopkins, Harvard, Georgetown Medical, phenomenal, you know, like internationally renowned. And they'll, you know, person's been in a motor vehicle accident or fell off a roof and, hey, no life-threatening injuries, their CT's um, normal. And then they'll be diagnosed with a concussion or a head injury and then discharged, um, typically without instructions on, on what to do. Mm -hmm. um, even the basics, you know, brain rest, taking it easy, no electronics, you know, take three or four days off from work um, and make sure you follow up with your primary care doc, your chiropractor or um, a concussion specialist in the area like myself. What are some of the um, emotional and mental effects of a concussion or traumatic brain injury? Sure, I would argue anywhere from uh, 60 to 80 percent of folks are going to experience some type of anxiety or depression related to the head injury. And it's due to two reasons. One, they're injured, so they can't do the things they normally do. So they normally work out, they normally go to work, and that their lifestyle is interrupted. So they're anxious about that. They're um sad about that the second piece and and really the the primary piece that i try to instruct patients on is it's due to the head injury mm -hmm. like why are you having balance problems well due to the concussion why are you having migraines well due to the car accident due to falling off the roof uh, why are you having memory problems well due to the concussion so why are you having emotional problems it's the the same brain your emotions aren't controlled by your foot and the part of your brain that helps regulate your emotions has gotten damaged. And that's why you're anxious, weird, uh, weepy, irritable, having trouble sleeping. Do you have any um, accounts of patients, ex examples of how you've seen the effects of concussion with patients you've worked with where uh, their moods change, uh, their job is affected, uh, things of that nature. Like if somebody had a job and they were an accountant, um, what, what would be some of the effects of, of a, of a concussion? Yeah. So, uh, 
let's go through kind of a typical example of what happens, the initial phase of the injury, what are the initial phases of treatment, and kind of a long-term impact uh, of a concussion. Um, you know, when you're hit on a football field or hit in the head with a soccer ball, you know, you're, you're generally going to get better within four to eight weeks. Um, you know, you're hit at 60 miles an hour by a tractor trailer or another vehicle, you know, a 20,000 pound vehicle or a 5,000 pound vehicle at those speeds, um, you know, just resetting expectations that you're not going to be better in two to four weeks. You're looking at months of recovery, the neck injuries, the back injuries, any other injuries, physical injuries the patient might have, as well as brain injury that the patient might have. Uh, so first, um, after an accident, let's say a high-speed motor vehicle accident, the patient's going to have neck and back pain. Um, and that those physical injuries are going to make it extremely difficult for a patient to fall asleep. So that's initially what we as a team are working on. Hey, get the patient out of pain, get them more comfortable so that they're able to sleep. If you or I were only getting two to three hours of sleep a night, I'd be pretty grumpy. My cognition would be off. My emotions would be all over the place, which is why I, we as a team are kind of targeting those symptoms first. Then the second cluster of symptoms we're typically targeting. Now, again, I'm kind of going through a general treatment plan. Again, individually, each treatment plan we develop is specific for that person's history, injury, et cetera. So in this case, the person's having vestibular issues, balance issues. So the second thing we're going to address are those issues so the person can get back in a car again, mm -hmm. have some independence, mobility. Um, they're not as nervous um, driving because their world is spinning around. So we'll address that. So now pain is addressed, insomnia is addressed, their balance is addressed. Now, hey, are you you still having emotional issues and cognitive issues? And that's where I'll come in and, and start to provide cognitive behavioral therapy um, sleep hygiene therapy to, to help with the insomnia, the emotional piece. And then if the, after the sleep gets better, if they're still having cognitive issues, we'll address those attention and concentration problems and those memory problems.